Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Lisa Blackburn and this is my YouTube channel for everything I want to talk about, science and math. And today we're in chemistry class and we're going to talk about measurements. Because the first thing we have to do in chemistry is if we go back to our standard over here, we are going to learn how to obtain, evaluate, and communicate information. And we have to do that in a way that scientists all over the world uh, can understand it. So we, so our first unit is about how to communicate. It's just our first five words of our standard is all we're doing here. All right, so how I do notes is I give you a graphic organizer so you don't have much to write down. You can do more listening than writing. I find that sometimes kids will write so much they're not listening, all they're doing is writing. But I'd rather you listen than write. But I don't want you to go asleep, so you, you know you gotta fill out your graphic organizer. And it also helps you know what the key words are. Yes, what do you need? You don't have the notes, they're over there under the periodic table. There you go. So get all four pages there. And also I make you color them. The reason why I make you color them is because studies have shown that with certain learning styles, if you're a visual organizer or if you're a tactile learner, just that little action of doing a little coloring will help put it in your memory and help you recall it on the test. And that's my goal. And I don't care if it's good coloring or bad coloring. You know, I just want a little color there. All right. And also, on your next packet, you'll get credit for your notes. So this is like the easiest grade you make in here because you get to just write it down. Now, I have to have a disclaimer. My board seems to not be calibrated, and so it doesn't want to write where I'm writing. So these might be messy. So you might have to just sort of figure, you know, you try to write neater than I do, but the board's not doing real good. I need to figure out how to calibrate it. I tried yesterday. Plugging and unplugging, that didn't work. So now we have to move on to something else. Okay, so what do you think is the study of substances and the changes they undergo? Chemistry. Chemistry, it's the class we're in, yay. Let's see if it'll write. Uh, see, look how high it is. And that's really confusing. It actually worked pretty good though. You can read it. Okay. So in chemistry, there's just like in everything, there's two kinds of measurements. And they both start with a Q. Do you know what they are? Qualitative. Qualitative and quantitative. Which one gives the results in a descriptive, descriptive non-numeric way? Qualitative. Y'all Qualitative. already know all of this. So smart. Okay. So I'm going to write lower than I want to. Oh, that worked. This is very confusing, though. To write one place in the letter show up somewhere else. And I'm also dyslexic. <laughs> so on occasion, I'll start writing backwards or upside down or inside out. You can just tell me I'm doing it and I'll straighten it out. And it does it more when I'm stressed. And I used to just think I was slightly dyslexic, but then I was on Facebook and it said, uh, dyslexic, well, how dyslexia looks when you're three. How it looks, and like, and it says if you had three of the symptoms, you were dyslexic. And I had like 50. I like, I had all of them. I was like, rats, I'm more dyslexic than I thought. And then the other thing was, one time I was teaching at Pebble Brook, and I was stressed. When I'm stressed, it's worse. So I wrote a note to Dr. Phelps, and I said that I had set up the lab. It was in the hood. I had taken the tests. She had written them. I had the keys and with me that she could send a kid to go get the lab out of the hood, but that she needed to come get the keys herself, obviously. Ha ha. Okay, so I wrote this whole long note. I sent a kid to go take it to her. And in just a minute, she comes running in, lab coat flapping, and she seems a little mad at me. And she's going, what is this? And I'm like, just what it says. I set up the lab. It's in the hood right there. You can send a kid for it. I've got the keys. Do you want them now? And then she just busts out laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? Why were you mad? And now why are you laughing at me? She said, you're dyslexic. And I'm like, what does it show? What do you mean? I had written the entire note in mirror writing. You can, so she thought for some reason I was like doing weird puzzles. But if you held it up to a mirror, it was perfect. And to me, 
as someone who's dyslexic, it looked normal, like my brain translated it. But then I blinked and I could see it was mirror writing. So like that's my crowning achievement of dyslexia. But then right before Christmas, last school week when we were here, I was really stressed trying to get everything done. And for the first time I started typing dyslexic. So like I'd type a B for a D or a Q for a P. And I was like, right. oh, and the other thing I'll do is I'll start a word at the end. So like if it's the, I'll write E, H T. So if I start doing that, y'all just keep an eye out for it. Tell me to quit it, and I'll slow down and I'll stop flipping everything. But don't don't be embarrassed to tell me that I'm writing backwards, okay? I'm not embarrassed about it. I've overcome. I'm an overcomer. All right. So anyway, so you can be an overcomer too. Okay. So qualitative. So anyway, as a dyslexic person, writing one place and it showing up somewhere else is very confusing to me, but. I'll, I'll push through. Okay, so the other one is quantitative. Oh, this is doing better. Quantitative. So uh, you can see the word quantity in there. Quantity, how many? So that's pretty easy to keep straight. Okay, so good at measurements have both accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close a measurement comes to the, what do you think? To the truth, to the right answer, right? The precision is how close several measurements are to the same value or how finely stated it is. So, like if I have stated measurement that it is 1.2467, it sounds like a really good measurement. But if I took it under broken balance, it might be finely stated and precise, but not accurate. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So, how it also, things are precise if they're repeatable. So let's look at our bullseye. Is that bullseye number one accurate, precise, neither, or both? What do you think about bullseye number one? It's precise but not accurate. It is precise but not accurate. P, not A. Okay, how about that one? Precise, accurate, both, or neither? I'd say neither. Out of these three shots, even though that one made it, we don't know that it made it. You know, if we're just doing, so I'd say neither. And then what about the last one? It's both. And that's what we want. We want accurate and precise. Okay? Expressing measurements. Okay? Scientific notation is a way to write really big. Ooh, we're off again. Really big and really small. Measurements. Now, why do we do this? Because it's easier and because of our calculators. Sorry about that. That looks bad, but that says calculator and that says big. It's the, the, the things that I need to calibrate this thing. Big, small, and then that says calculators. And so you got a little picture of a calculator there to help you. Okay, so I'm going to scroll. Come on. All right, so how it works. Does everybody already know this from math class? I teach it when I teach Algebra 1. Do you all learn it? No. That's good. That means I get to teach it again. Okay, so this is how it works. So if you've got a really big number, that your calculator can do math on numbers bigger and smaller than the display screen can show. Does that make sense to you? But So we want to have a way to tell the calculator these numbers, and the calculator tell us the numbers in a shorthand way, and it's called scientific notation. So how it works is the proper, the proper etiquette of it is you have your first non-zero digit, a decimal, any other non-zero digits, then x for times 10 to an exponent. 
And, uh, and now see it went higher than I wanted to. So it's a digit, a, a decimal, any other non-zero digits times 10 to an exponent. It'll make more sense when I show it to you here, okay? So here is a big number. Let's see if it'll write for me. Yes, okay? That's where the decimal would go, right? I, we're going to make it hop to its proper place. The decimal's proper place is after the one, the first non-zero digit. All good with that? So we're going to count how many places it has to hop to get in the right place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you see everybody see how that took ten hops? So now we're gonna write it. One point two three times ten, and how many hops was it? Ten, ten times ten to the tenth power. That's not hard, is it? Okay, so now let's do this one. It's a very small number. We have to make the zero hop to its place behind the one. Let's count how many hops it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. 1.23 times 10 to the negative six, because it's a little number. Big numbers have positive exponents. Little numbers have negative exponents. Good? Let's do some more. Okay? So now, that's what we just said. <coughs> the big number has a positive exponent. The small number has a negative exponent. Now, I told you you had to get out your calculator, so get it out. And let's see how to put these numbers in the calculator. We're going to start with the TI-8483, because that's what I'm hoping you have for this class. Turn it on down here. <coughs> okay, and we're going to put in this number right here. 1, 2, 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, how you do it is first you just put 1 point, the point is right down here, 1.23. And then what you're looking for on everybody's calculator, no matter which one it is, is a button that says EE or EXP. On this calculator, it is painted on the calculator behind the comma, which is where my finger is. How you get to things that are painted on the calculator is the second button. You'll notice the second button and the paint are the same color. So I say second EE, and it puts on my calculator this, 1.23 with a little E right there. That E means times 10. You do not hit the times or the 10 button. Eh, eh, eh. Don't do it. You will end up with the wrong answer. The reason why is because your calculator, remember when you learned about terms in math, like polynomials, remember that? Nobody got rash, nobody cried. You remember polynomials? Okay, so a, a term is like one nomial of a math equation. Your calculator, if it sees 1.23 times 10 to the second to, to, times 10 to the negative six, sees that as two terms. And it will, if you do divide it by three, it will only divide it into the times 10 to the negative six and not the whole number. It won't see it as a whole number. Sometimes you'll get the right answer, but a lot of times you'll get the wrong answer. So it's just like a little time bomb ready to go off and sink your test grade. So you get in the habit of never, ever, ever doing it wrong, always putting scientific notation numbers in right. Did I convince you? Okay. All right. So you do 1.23e, and now you do, do the negative symbol, and then you do 6. You do not go up to exponent land. This will be written like that on your calculator. It's all in numerator land. Remember, did y'all learn the house, the basement, the, the main floor and the attic? Did y'all learn it that way in elementary school? Sometimes they teach us a house. I do it as denominator land, numerator land, exponent land. We're staying in numerator land, all right? Okay, so you put that in your calculator and then you can hit enter and it just says it again. All right, now, what about if you've got this one? 
Here, your EE button is right there. So everybody with this calculator, give it a try. Turn it on, 1.23 EE, negative is down here, not minus. Minus goes in the middle of things, negative is here on the bottom. Negative six, you don't go up to exponent land, you hit enter. And it took it out of scientific notation for us. Okay, now what about if you have this one? The E button is right here. So turn it on. 1.23, negative, uh, E, -E negative right down here on the bottom, six, enter. And it will also take it out for you. Any questions? Y'all are doing great. Or else you're too scared to ask a question. Don't be scared to ask a question. Uh, that's how you learn. You got to have the, the dialogue going back and forth. And the thing is, is none of you know chemistry. I'm the only person in this room with chemistry. So you're not going to look dumb when you don't know chemistry because you don't know chemistry. So you're not going to look dumb if you ask a question because nobody else knows it either. I'm the only person. Well, now Mr. Myrick walked in and he knows a bit of chemistry too, but I know more than he knows. He knows more about rocks than I do. <laughs> He's a geologist. I'm not. I've never had a geology class. I'd like to know about geology. I think rocks are interesting, but I don't know much about them. Okay, so in your calculator, you're looking for EEEXP. If you have a Casio, it might say SCI or it might say, say times 10. If you have a Casio, I will show you individually how to do it. Because most people don't have Casios. I hate Casios. I, I prefer you go get a TI. But if you got one and you don't have money for another calculator, so be it. And I'll show you how to use it. All right. So now I want you to try one. Everybody try to change 36000 into scientific notation and put it in your calculator. Let's give it a try. Try to put 36000 into scientific notation. Count how many frog jumps it is. And then try to put it in your calculator. I'll take a dance break while y'all are doing that. <laughs> so how many frog jumps is it? Four. Four. Is it a big number or a little number? Two. Big number. So is the exponent positive or negative? Positive. positive. So it is... 3.6 times 10 to the fourth power. Did you get it? Okay, now try to put it in your calculator. Everybody give it a try. 3.6 EE4. And then hit equals. Sometimes it'll take it out for you. Yeah. The TI84 will take that one back out for you if you hit enter. Okay, now try the next one. Try 200. Did you get 2 times 10 to the second power? Okay. And uh, try putting it in your calculator. And then what I want you to do is I want you to multiply these two. We're going to do a math problem. Our first math problem. Aren't you excited? Put these two numbers in your calculator in scientific notation and multiply them. So do 3.6 EE4, then hit times 2 EE2, enter. And what'd you get? Yes, 7,200,000. And if we wrote that in scientific notation, what would that be? Yes, 7.2 times 10 to the sixth power. Okay, now try, let's try to put this one in our calculator, uh, in scientific notation, and that one, and then I want you to divide them and see if you can get the answer. Put that one in scientific notation and that one, then put them in your calculator, Divide them and see if you can get the answer. I'll do it up here while you do it there.
did you get 8.25 times 10 to the negative fifth? Did you get it? Did I do it too fast? Did I not give you enough time? Okay, so that was our first thing. We've learned something. Yay! Let's learn another math concept. One down. More to go. Significant figures, or sometimes they're called significant digits, but the cool kids call them sig figs or sig digs. So if you get to college and they're talking about sig digs or sig figs, now you'll know what they're talking about, okay? So this is how to round. So say you've got, uh, you did some math, and you measured on your balance that something was two grams, and you divided it by its volume, and it was three centimeters cubed. So you want the density, and density is mass divided by volume, so you do two divided by three, and what are you gonna get on your calculator? What's two divided by three on your calculator? Point six, 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 seven, right? As many sixes as it can fit, then seven. How many sixes do you write down? If you wrote them all down, it would appear that you're at Georgia Tech or Emory using the million dollar equipment that goes to six decimal places. And it would be not honest of you to do that. It would make your, your results look better than they were. You did this lab here at East Paulding High School, not at Georgia Tech. Yes? Don't you have to no, you do not. So where you round to, there's rules for, because it's an ethical issue. It's an ethical issue of reporting your data correctly and honestly, okay? So these rules are the rules for significant digits or significant figures, okay? Let me get to the right place here, okay. So first of all, how do you round? Now, uh, Oh, in this class, there used to be some old rules back in the 70s before my time, but sometimes you still see them in college books. Before this class, if a number is five and up, we're going to round up. So like if you're rounding and, and you needed to round it up, if it's a five, you round it up to the next number. If it's four and under, you round down. Okay, everybody got that so far? Next, you only look at the digit next to, the, to it to decide to round up. Okay, so let me explain that to you. Is because some there's a curriculum out there called a Becca that if you have been homeschooled or private schooled, you might have used when you were little, and it teaches this wrong. So I always want to go over it. Okay, so how it teaches is. Okay, so if I wanted to know if I leave this a two or round it up to a three, you would only look at the four. Does the four round the two up or leave it alone? It leaves it alone because it's less than five. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so there's a curriculum that says you start here. Two leaves the four alone, four leaves the six alone, six rounds the seven up to eight, eight rounds the nine up, so this rounds up to a five, this rounds up to a five, five rounds this up, that would become a three. Do you see that? That's how they teach it, and it's wrong. The reason why is this, remember, is ones, uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths. This 10 millionth, if we were looking at it, is so tiny that there is no way this 10 millionth can have any effect on this great big ones place. Does that make sense to you? One time I was teaching this at the library at, at, at Dallas Library, about near Sarah Bab Pool, and I was tutoring someone, and I was teaching it to someone at, at the young adult fiction table that's over there, and their young adult fiction books are there, and I was teaching it to one kid, and another kid poked their head through like the Hunger Games books and said, 
I was taught that wrong. So it was funny. Somebody was lurking, listening to tutoring and learned a little free math there. But so there are kids right here in Baldwin County who, who have learned that wrong. So I always <laughs> want to go over it. Okay, so why do we want to round correctly? And this is what I told Bryn, is that we want to be honest scientists and not make our data look better than it really is. Okay? So, this is how you do it. There's a list of rules we're going to follow. The first rule is, is you do your math using all the digits you have. You do no rounding to the very last. Okay, number one, leave all the digits to the end. Do not start rounding in the middle. You will get the wrong answer, especially on the SAT and the ACT. Do not round to the very end. Okay, then rule number one. Rule number two is there are different rules for addition and subtraction and multiplying and division. Okay, for addition and subtraction, you round your 